values for voltage and current for the potato and graph them in a line graph we get something like that. In order to try and understand what quantities we can get from a voltage against current graph for internal resistance, uh, we need to first of all look at uh, the equation for internal resistance. So from the formula for internal resistance, which you may remember is E equals I times big R plus small r, or alternatively E equals IR plus I times smaller. So this little term here, this is the voltage in our external circuit, the energy used up in, in the outside part of the circuit. This little term here, this is our loss of volts, that's the energy used up in the battery. That's due to the resistance of the, the chemicals in the battery. In this case, it's due to the resistance of the chemicals in the potato, but the, the idea is still the same. We're going to rearrange that equation slightly. We take V as being equal to IR and then add that to I times small r. Rearrange that for V. We get E minus I times small r. We can rearrange it even further and get V equals negative IR. Now you don't need to remember how to do this, I'm just showing you a different version of this equation so that we can try and understand it a bit better. This is, getting, this is us getting this formula into a form that we can understand and get information from. We? We're going to compare that to the equation for a straight line. as we should know is y equals mx plus c. We have known that for a couple of years, I'm sure. If we compare this equation down here to this equation up here, then we can say that the v is equal to what's of it, whatever's on the y-axis. is equal to whatever is on the x-axis. That's not usually complicated. Um, it also doesn't really give us any information that we don't already have. But the remaining two quantities in this equation compared to the equation of the straight line do. Because if we use E, E is our constant C. And our gradient is equal to negative R. So what that tells us is that the gradient of this line, the negative of the gradient of this line, is going to give us uh, our value for internal resistance. And E is, is some form of constant, um, which we'll talk I'll talk you through how we can get that. So if we want to calculate um, internal resistance from the graph that we looked at previously, if we want to calculate it from this graph, then we take the gradient of that graph, that gives us a negative value of internal resistance. So gradient is equal to negative of internal resistance. We got a value of negative, or some people got a value of negative, around 3.73 times 10 to negative 3, which means that your internal resistance is 3.73 times 10 to negative 3. Be so we've now got the gradient that's given us internal resistance. We've still got two things we can calculate from that graph. That's EMF and short circuit current. So this is how we calculate the two other quantities that we were looking to calculate. The cut on the, the y-axis is your EMF. That's the, the maximum energy that can be delivered. That's before it's connected to anything externally. 
a battery, that would be you know, 1.5 or 3 volts, if that's what the battery will say it does. In our case, for the potato, it was you know, 0 0.8. Calling the x-axis there is your short circuit current. That's when your external resistance is equal to 0. The short circuit current is really just like connecting one wire from one side of the battery around to the other. There are no components in here to add this external element of resistance, which is this big R. So this full term disappears, leaving I times small r. So if you want to calculate the short circuit current, you do E divided by small r. So we can get all of those three quantities from just looking at um, a graph called voltage against current.